Hi there, my name is Rob and I make uh, health and nutrition videos and I, I want to talk to you uh, about a phenomenon called digestive leukocytosis and as well about food enzymes that exist in raw uncooked food and how the lack of these can affect your health. Uh, digestive leukocytosis occurs when the human body increases the number of white blood cells in the blood when certain foods are eaten. The person who discovered digestive leukocytosis is Paul Kuchikov, who was a researcher in Switzerland. Prior to the 1930s and Paul Kuchikov's discovery, scientists thought that leukocytosis happens whenever any food is eaten. So scientists were perplexed as to why digestive leukocytosis happens whenever food is eaten. Uh, but Paul Kuchikov was actually able to show that digestive leukocytosis only happens when cooked food is eaten and not raw food. So whenever you eat cooked food, uh, more white blood cells show up in the blood as a response. Uh, what this shows is that your immune system views cooked food as a possible threat, but not raw food. Uh, he also showed that if you eat raw food before cooked food, uh, digestive leukocytosis doesn't happen either meaning that raw, uh, eating raw food before eating cooked food at the same meal doesn't seem to provoke this immune response. Paul Kuchikov was able to show that if food was altered in a more significant way than just heating, such as heating at an extremely high temperature or refining or even refining without heating, uh, even more significant changes would happen in the blood, such as the percentage of different types of white blood cells changing, proving that refined foods provoke an even more heightened immune response uh, by the body than just heating alone. So when cooked food is eaten, there is an increase in the number of white blood cells. Uh, but if refined foods are eaten, there is a change in the percentage of um, different types of white blood cells as well. Uh, Paul Kuchikov was nominated uh, for the Nobel Prize in 1945 for this discovery. Um, another researcher in the area of raw food who actually spent about 50 years researching food enzymes was Dr. Edward Howell. Edward Howell, who I talk about in my raw food video, was a researcher who found that food enzymes that are found in raw food that are not in cooked food are needed to digest food. A diet composed exclusively of cooked foods puts a severe strain on the pancreas, uh, drawing down its reserves. Uh, so if the pancreas is constantly overstimulated to produce enzymes that should be in foods, uh, the result over time will be inhibited function of the pancreas. Uh, so when you eat a, an enzyme-poor diet comprised primarily of, co primarily of cooked foods, you use up a tremendous amount of their enzyme potential in the outpouring of secretions from the pancreas and other digestive organs. The result, according to the late uh, Dr. Edward Howell, who was a pioneer in the field of enzyme research in an interview that was conducted on him, is a shortened lifespan, um, illness, and lowered resistance to, the, to stress of all types. Uh, he points out that humans and animals on a diet comprised largely of cooked foods um, have an enlarged pan pancreas, while the other glands and organs, most notably the brain, actually shrink in size. Dr. Edward Howell actually said that vitamins, minerals, and hormones can't do any work without uh, enzymes, meaning that all the nutrition in, nutrition in food is actually useless without enzymes. Dr. Edward Howell went on to say that if enzymes were in the food we eat, they would do some or even a considerable part of the work of digestion by themselves. Uh, however, however, when you eat cooked uh, enzyme-free food, this forces the body itself to make the enzymes needed for digestion. So this depletes the body's limited enzyme capacity. When asked how serious was the strain on our enzyme bank caused by diets of mostly cooked food, uh, Dr. Howell replied that, by saying that he believes it's one of the top causes of premature aging and early death. He also believed that it was uh, the underlying cause of almost all degenerative diseases. So if the body is overburdened to supply many enzymes to the saliva, gastric juice, pancreatic juice, and intestinal juice, uh, then it has to stop the production of enzymes for other purposes. Um, so, so if that occurs, then how can the body also make enough enzymes to run the brain, the heart, the kidneys, the lungs, the muscles, and the other organs and tissues? So this stealing of enzymes from other parts of the body to service the digestive tract sets up a competition for enzymes among the various organ systems and tissues of the body. According to Dr. Howell, this may be the direct cause of cancer, coronary heart disease, diabetes, and many other chronic incurable diseases. This state of enzyme deficiency stress is the norm in the majority of persons in the civilized enzyme-free diet. When asked what evidence is there that human beings suffer from uh, food enzyme deficiency, he replied by saying that there's so much evidence that he could only summarize a, a small fraction of it. So he said that to begin with, human beings have the lowest levels of starch digesting enzymes in their blood of any creature. We also have the highest level of these enzymes in the urine, meaning they are, that they are being used up faster. There's other evidence showing that these low enzyme levels are not due to a peculiarity of our species. Instead, they are due to the large amounts of cooked starch that we eat. 
Uh, also, he said that uh, we know that decreased enzyme levels are found in a number of chronic ailments, such as allergies, skin disease, and even serious diseases like diabetes and cancer. Um, in addition, uh, incriminating ev evidence indicates that cooked enzyme-free diets contribute to a pathological over-enlargement of the pituitary gland, uh, which regulates the other glands. Um, so furthermore, there is research showing that almost 100% of the people over 50 dying from accidental causes were found to have defective pituitary glands. So he went on to say that another effect associated with food enzyme deficiency is that the size of the brain decreases. Uh, in, a, in addition, the, the thyroid over enlarges, even in the presence, presence of uh, adequate iodine. So this has been shown in a number of species. Uh, when asked uh, what else is there, Dr. Howell answered by saying that the human pancreas is burdened with enzyme production far in excess of any creature living on a raw food diet. Uh, he, w he actually went on to say that in proportion to body weight, the human pancreas is more than twice as heavy as that of a cow. So Dr. Howell went on to say that human beings eat mainly cooked food, while cows eat raw grass. Uh, so on top of that, there's the evidence that rats on a cooked food diet uh, have a pancreas about twice as heavy as rats on a raw diet. Uh, as well, he mentioned that evidence shows that the human pancreas is one of the heaviest in the animal kingdom uh, when you adjust for total body weight. So, this over-enlargement of the, the human pancreas is just as dangerous, probably even more so, than an over-enlargement of the heart, the thyroid, and other art organs. He actually went on to say that the overproduction of enzymes in humans is a pathological adaptation to a diet of enzyme-free foods. Uh, the pancreas is not uh, the only part of the body that over-secretes enzymes when the diet is cooked. Uh, in addition, the, there are the sal human salivary glands, uh, which produce enzymes to a degree never found in wild animals on their natural foods. So, in fact, some animals on a raw diet do not have any enzymes at all in their saliva. Cows and sheep, for example, produce tons of saliva with no enzymes in it at all. So, dogs, dogs as well also uh, secrete no enzymes in their saliva when they're eating a raw diet. Uh, however, it, like if you give them, um, if you start giving them cookie, uh, cooked starchy food, their salivary glands will start producing, start digesting enzymes within 10 days. So in addition, there's more evidence that the enzymes in saliva represent a pathological condition and not a normal one. To begin with, salivary enzymes cannot digest raw starch. So this is something that Dr. Howell had actually demonstrated in his laboratory. Um, the enzymes in saliva will actually only attack a piece of starch once it's cooked. So the body will channel some of its limited enzyme producing capacity into saliva only if it has to. Uh, he actually states in the same interview that the evidence shows that diseases in humans actually first started when humans started cooking their food. So he gives the example of Neanderthals that lived 50,000 years ago that used to use fire to keep their caves consistently warm all winter and would eat meat that was roasted on the same fire used to warm his cave. And he noted that fossils found of Neanderthals indicate that they had crippling arthritis. Um, and, and he states that it may be possible they had other diseases as well. Uh, he also states that another creature that lived off this roasted meat was a cave bear, which he said that according to paleontologists was a partially domesticated animal, which uh, protected the Neanderthal uh, man from the cave tiger. Uh, but apparently this cave bear also suffered from crippling, crippling arthritis as well. When the interviewer asked if it was possible that this was just the result of living in a cold climate, he said no, it wasn't, and gave an example of, the, uh, of Eskimos who live in a cold climate, but also ate large amounts of raw food. Uh, in fact, he says that the word Eskimo means raw food eater. Um, he also went on to say that Eskimos didn't suffer from arthritis and chronic diseases in general. Uh, he then went on to say that, the, that medicine men don't exist among Eskimos, but among North American Indians who eat a, lar a large proportion of their food cooked, the medicine man always held a, pr a prominent pr uh, position in their tribe. In the same interview, Dr. Howell said that from all the experimentation he has done, he has noted that his it is impossible for a person to become fat on a raw food diet, regardless of caloric intake, and that animals on a cooked food diet become heavier than their counterpart, counterparts on a raw food diet, and is the reason that farmers feed uh, pigs cooked potatoes to fatten them up, as this doesn't happen as much on raw potatoes. So eating raw food not only prevents illness, but obesity as well. If you've watched my previous videos, especially my raw food video and my video about how to avoid getting sick during a pandemic or epidemic, You'll know that eating raw food when combined with other healthy habits such as avoiding processed foods such as white sugar and white flour 
uh, avoiding salt, caffeine, and alcohol, and getting plenty of sleep and sunshine. And taking vitamin D capsules when there's no sunshine also helps fend off disease. In my raw food video and, my, and in my pandemic video, I talk about the various studies that confirm this, but I'll just sum these up briefly right here. So Francis Pottinger was a scientist who put three groups of cats on various diets. Uh, one was a fully raw food diet with one-third raw meat and two-thirds unpa uh, raw unpasteurized milk. One was a one-third raw meat and two-thirds cooked meat diet, and the third was a one-third raw meat and two-thirds pasteurized milk diet. And the ones on the cooked meat and pasteurized milk diets came down with all kinds of health issues that plague mankind. But the raw food cats live healthy just with no trace of, traces of disease whatsoever. So in addition, in the book Gold Dot by uh, Junko Yasui and Louis E. Cook Jr., they talk about an experiment in which uh, there were three sets of rats. So the first was fed all raw food. Uh, the second was fed the standard American diet. Uh, and the third was fed the st uh, standard American diet for the first half of their life and then all raw food for the second half of their lives. Um, so the standard American diet rats all came down with all kinds of health issues and had a vicious temperament. Uh, the raw food rats were completely free of disease their whole lives and, and got along really well with each other and didn't fight. Um, and the third group of rats was very sick and, and were aging and had a vicious temperament for the first half of their lives. And some of them were put to death and autopsied after this period and all their internal organs were affected negatively. But for the second half of their lives, uh, for the ones that were not put to death and autopsied, their health problems cleared up. They slowed down their aging and they, they were not as vicious and violent, had a much more peaceful and less volatile temperament for the second half of their lives. Um, after autopsy, autopsying them at the end of their lifespan, it was shown that their internal organs looked the same as the first group of rats which were on the fully raw diet, uh, meaning that the degeneration that had happened during the first half of their lives had reversed over the second half of their lives. This is obvious because their internal organs were normal, whereas the ones from the third group that were put to death after the first half of their lives on the standard American diet had lots of degeneration in their internal organs. Uh, this proves that not only does raw food uh, eating prevent health problems from occurring in the first place, but that raw food uh, has the capability of, rever of reversing uh, dis disease, illness, and degeneration that has already occurred. Um, so in any case, I know that for, the most, for most people, including myself, eating a raw food diet is extremely difficult, especially in a society that wouldn't support such a diet. Um, but what I did was, uh, was that I started slowly incorporating more and more raw food into my diet until I got to the point where I eat a very large proportion of my on my food raw and when you notice that you sleep better are able to think more clearly and in general catch way less bacterial and viral infections it will be very hard to go back so it will motivate you to keep eating that that way as you will feel much better uh, be well rested get sick less and yes even uh, think more clearly than you would on the cooked food diet once you once you see the results of incorporating more raw food into your diet it may be hard to go back to your old way of life um, well, anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. Um, I've also put a link in the description to the interview with Dr. Edward Howell, as, as well as the link to the information about Paul Kuchikoff, the scientist who, who discovered that uh, digi digestive leukocytosis doesn't happen after eating raw food. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now.